Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through genetic screening and counselling. If you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. Now this is what I'm going to be covering in this video and if you do want to skip to particular parts I'll put in the time code so you can either look at the creation and use of DNA probes and DNA hybridisation or looking at how you can use those probes to screen patients for particular disease causing alleles and then finally looking at why you may choose to have your DNA screened so linking to personalised medicines and genetic counselling. So first of all let's have a look then at DNA probes. So DNA probes are short single stranded pieces of DNA which have a radioactive or fluorescent label on them so that these DNA probes can be located. And the DNA probe itself is used to locate specific alleles. So the sequence of the DNA in this probe will be deliberately chosen. It is complementary in sequence to the allele that's been screened for. So the patient's DNA sample has to be treated so that it is single stranded rather than double stranded. And the reason for that is when you then mix the patient's DNA with the DNA probe, they're both single stranded. So if they are complementary in sequence, they will then be able to hybridize, which is the phrase for joining them together. So let's have a look at this hybridization in more detail. So as we said, the patient's DNA sample has to be treated and that treatment is heating it up so that the hydrogen bonds between the bases break and therefore you get this single stranded DNA. And that stage is called denaturing. The patient's single stranded DNA sample is then mixed with the DNA probe and this will then be cooled down. So if there are any complementary sequences that have aligned opposite each other, the hydrogen bonds can then form and we call this stage annealing. Now some of the patient's DNA sample that was separated will just join back together, but some will anneal or join together with, with the DNA probe. So the method for this is, first of all, you need to know the specific DNA base sequence for the allele that you're screening for. And once that's been identified, you can then use the DNA sequencing techniques, such as the Sanger method, um, to determine this, and then use the gene machine so that you then can create that DNA fragment. And I have got a video on gene machines, which I'll link up here, so if you don't know about those, you can have a look at the gene machine. Now, once you've created one DNA fragment, you'll want to make lots of these DNA fragments so you can make multiple DNA probes. So you can clone that DNA fragment using PCR. And again, I've got a video which I'll link here so you can find out more about PCR. So you've now got multiple DNA fragments which are single stranded. And you'll then need to add your label, which is either going to be a radioactive nucleotide, which would be a nucleotide that contains the isotope 32P or the phosphorus, or you would add a fluorescent label so that when you put the DNA under UV light, it will emit light or fluoresce. And this is so you can easily identify if the probe is present and therefore if a patient does have that particular allele. Now, after the hybridization step, which is where you allow the DNA probes and the patient's single-stranded DNA to mix and potentially bind if they're complementary, the DNA is washed so that any of the DNA probes that didn't bind are washed away. And therefore, you are just left with the DNA probes which have bound to the allele of interest. You would then be able to detect the presence of the radioactive isotope using x-rays or you could use a UV light to see if you do get this fluorescence from the presence of a fluorescence label and that is then how you can identify if the patient does have that allele of interest. Now you don't typically actually do this just testing for one particular allele at a time, it's more common that you can have your DNA tested for a whole range of different potential genetic disorders or even some cancers. And we call this a DNA microarray or just an array. And this could be a glass slide with multiple different DNA probes added. And then you would then add your um, DNA samples on top. So it's much more efficient.
So why might you want to have your DNA screened? Now, one really, really beneficial reason is personalized medicine. And what this means is the dose or the drug that you take can be tailored for your particular genotype. So some painkillers will be more effective or less effective depending on your genotype. It can also be used, as I said, to look at dose. So depending on your metabolism, you may need a higher dose or a lower dose. So this means it will be more effective a treatment. It's safer, so you won't be taking an unnecessarily high dose and it can save money because you're getting the exact dosage that will be effective for you. It can also link to other reasons. So for example, diabetics, in some instances can take vitamin E to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. But for some people with diabetes with a particular genotype, if they were to take vitamin E, it would actually increase their risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So that's just a couple of examples of how either the dose or particular medicines or suggested treatments can be personalised depending on the alleles that you have. So finally, it's looking at genetic counselling. So the decision to have your DNA screened is quite a tough one because you're being told information about what might potentially happen later in your life. And that can be a very, very overwhelming piece of information. So patients need to be fully informed of the pros and cons of having their DNA screened before they make that decision. And that's the role of a genetic counsellor. It's a type of social work where you can go and discuss your genetic family history or your family history of particular genetic disorders. So you can then work out the likelihood that you may be carrying an allele which can cause that particular disease. This may be of interest to you before starting a family so you can work out what's the likelihood that you may have children with a particular disease, for example, sickle cell anemia or cystic fibrosis, or it might be for general health. So if there is a family history of Huntington's disease or certain breast cancers, for example, you may decide to be screened to find out whether you carry that allele as well. Now, the genetic counsellor will talk you through this process talk you through the likelihood, but then also why you may or may not want to go ahead with the screening. So as I said, some examples include testing for the allele that is known to cause cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, but also certain breast cancers. And I'm going to link this one to why you may or may not want to find out. And for certain diseases like Huntington's disease, you cannot change the development of that disease if you have the allele. So if you do carry that dominant allele, you will develop Huntington's disease. So that may be something that you don't want to know because it might impact how you live your whole life until the disease develops. However, for breast cancer, you may want to be screened for one of the particular alleles which is known to cause um, one type of breast cancer because you could then opt to have a mastectomy. So that's some of the examples of the roles and the uses of genetic counselling. So that is it for this topic. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.